Welcome, you have reached review time with Imperial. Today's review will be The Tax Collector, starting Bobby Soto, Shao LaBeouf, and Clay Shahid Sloan plays his bone. And uh, Shao LaBeouf plays his creeper. And um, Bobby Soto plays as David. You also have a cameo appearance with George Lopez. He's in the movie, but he's not that much in the movie. But let's get into it. So this movie popped up and didn't know what to think of it. Gave it a shot to watch. And it was de decent. And so, you know, uh, Shia LaBeouf, you've seen him in, you know, that, uh, that um, his earlier film, where he was a teenager, and uh, I forgot what it was called. It was like a Disney type film. Then he went on to Transformers, and Transformers he was good. And then I get he was really the star of Transformers. And then when he wanted to, you know, cash out, they wouldn't cash him out, so they went in another direction and got another main character. That's when in came um, uh, Mark Wahlberg, and then you never seen Shia again. You've seen Shao again in the news for various different things, and his image was changing. So this character, to me, is based off the image that he's been carrying, like this bad guy and just always getting in trouble. Now, this character is not like the other roles I've seen him in. This character is more him serious. He's like a, um, a henchman, you know, uh, Hitman, not a hitman, but he's an enforcer. There you go. So you got also uh, Clay Sloan. If you you seen him, I think the first time I seen him in any type of movie was back in Training Day, when um they were in the hood and Denzel Washington was saying, you know, he made that famous speech. King Kong ain't got nothing on me. I have all of you in Pelican Bay. That's the first time I remember seeing him in a film. Since then, uh, you know, I've seen him. He was linked to that situation that happened with Suge Knight and stuff like that or whatever. Then you see him in this movie. So he plays a, a key role in this movie. And then Bobby Soto plays as David. Um, he's the lead character. So it's basically, they have a family um, crime organization and uh, David's uh, father is in jail and basically he's running business from in jail and he's using his son as an enforcer so david and creeper are the enforcers and what they do is go around and keep the balance um as long as you tie with them nobody's gonna mess with you they collect money for, off of businesses they tax the drug dealers they keep everything in line and so it can be peace and everybody can get money together. So that's basically the bulk of the movie. The movie really doesn't, it's, a, it's an hour and 35 minute movie. The movie really doesn't start picking up until like the last 40 minutes. No, yeah, yeah, give or take about the last 40 minutes, 45 minutes of the movie. So the first 45 minutes is kind of like they're trying to build the characters up in a sense, but it's. It gets no more than what I'm saying. It's just they're collecting money and they different things happen. They run up on people and, you know, hey, you, you, you missed out on the money. They pull the guns out. They don't really do no real true action. People that may try to short them on the money. David kind of has like, he's no have the like, Creeper is, he, which is a shower. Mm -hmm. He's pretty much going to go at anybody, but uh Dave is not like that. He kind of got a heart, so he don't really hit, give people passes in a sense. And um so what happens is um a guy comes out and his character, his name is um what was his character name? Kanijo. And Kanijo, he he comes out He's straight. This is a new world order. This is how things gonna go. 
it was known back in the day that uh, David's father had um, killed somebody that he was close to or whatever. So he's coming over to take 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 over. So one of the times they were supposed to get a tax um, collect collection, one of the people they was collected from, Kinesio is there letting them know, David know, like, yo, it's a new world order. I give you a chance to be part of it. If not, you know, you're going to get rolled on pretty much. So David runs back to his uncle who was played as by um, George Lopez, Uncle Lewis. And he runs by Uncle Lewis. And Uncle Lewis is scared because he knows this guy, Kinesio, means business. And when you see him, that means death is soon to follow. So um, that's the last time you see Uncle Lewis. Because the next time you see him, uh, Kinesio tell him, telling David, hey, yo, um, are you making peace? If not, you, all I need you to do is kiss the hand and we can roll. David's pride, not going to let that happen. And so... Um, He shows David telling him, I don't got no beef with you, man, but this is business. And he showed David his uncle's head in a freezer or whatever. So they letting him know this war at this moment. Now, the part I don't get is at this moment is war, right? And you guys is dealing with all this money. It shows through the, the drug trafficking, they doing all the tax and it don't seem like uh, David didn't have a he didn't have a strong muscle. He didn't have a crew. It was just him and Creeper, pretty much. They had a couple other guys, but nobody like they didn't have an army. That was a minus. Too much money involved to not have an army, and then too much money involved to not have strong contingency plans. Like they still all lived around the way with all you know. Just didn't it just didn't make sense. So nevertheless. Um, the war is very jump off, and David has a wife and kids, so she had bad dreams, and he asked her what her bad dreams was, and she kept seeing death or whatever, and um, he lets her know what he experienced with her uncle and everything, and at that moment, once you see your uncle here, that was, we got to get gone or whatever, you know what I mean, or she and kids got to get gone or whatever, but... He's still meeting with the crew to devise a plan at the little auto shop they got. And sure enough, Kinesio shows up, shoots up the um the auto shop. He manages to get away, but he, he got Creeper. And so I thought it was going to be more to Creeper on this. He wasn't really, you know, they didn't sh I thought it was going to be more to it where, you know, I mean... They could have made his character like be more um badass, but they didn't. So it you know, pretty much when he died, you didn't really you wasn't attached to it. You just like, oh well, oh, that's it for him. So he pretty much Kinesio tortured him, beat him down, bloodied him up, everything, and sent the video to David. And so at that moment, David uh grabbed his wife and she was all beat up and he was like, yo. We got to get the kids. They grabbed the kids from school. And they went somewhere that they thought would be safe. So the wife went there. He said, I got to go make a run. So at his cousin's house, he had working for him the whole time. He shows there, go in the backyard. And they dig up this canister that the, the cousin never, nobody in the family never knew was there. And inside this canister was like $1.6 in cash. And he said, him and Creeper back in the day, they hit an armored car, an armored car, and just, you know, stashed the money or whatever. So it shows him thinking back with him and Creeper. You know, at one moment, him and Creeper uh, said, they, you know, Creeper said, I'll die for you. And pretty much. So at this moment, he called his wife and told her pretty much, like, yo, I got the money. It was 1.6 million. But the wife was like, we need to just get going. Don't, don't stay and fight. And he was like, I promise, we're going to roll. So he shows up to the hotel. When he gets to the hotel, nobody's there. And, you know, so he had thought his wife had took the kids and 
um, dropped him off with the uh, with her relative or whatever. And as he's in the the bathroom window, you know, washing his face, he looks in the reflection of the mirror and he sees his wife laid out on the floor. She's dead. And so, you know, he went through an emotional state with that. So that was pretty messed up. What I failed to mention earlier in the, the film where Bones, the character Bones, uh, Clay, Clay Sloan come in. His character, at one of the times, he's the head of the blood gang. And at one of the times the situation happened, one of the members of his blood gang was getting tortured and David came and intervened, told the you know, squash the beef, don't kill him, let him go, or whatever. So he brought him back, and then Sloan really respect David for that, and was like, yo, basically, you're a good man. So now, when Kinesio is got, he has David's kids, and he don't have nobody else to turn to, because he don't got no army, he shows up the Bone and his crew and say, hey, man, woo, 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 I got a situation I don't got nobody else to turn to. They got my kids or whatever. So now they're going on a hunt. And now they're looking for his kids. They go to a different hi a few different hideouts. They shoot a couple people. And um, they're you know, finding his kids. And the kids was left with Kinesio's mom or grandma. And they had the opportunity to kill Kinesio's mom or grandma. And David said, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to stoop to his level. I'm not going to go there. And he was like, Family is off on limits. So they let David's kids go with um, Bones' crew to keep them safe away. He left uh, Kinesio's mother alive, and she thanked him. But he's like, I got to go in this. So they, they roll up to where um, Kinesio's staying at, and uh, it's a hitman with a gun out on top of the roof. And his uh, Kinesio has like a, um, a hit woman. That he that's always with him, and she pretty much rolls up on Bone. It's just Bone and David, and David went around the back, and Bone is in the car. She put the gun out, like basically, come on, I got you. So he end up, you know, uh, I think she shot him in the leg or something, and he, you know, disarmed her, and he ended up killing her, stomping her head with the with the gun, and then uh, of course David kills the dude on the roof, and then he busts in shooting. And then Bone had, I mean, Kinesio had a woman on the bed giving him a massage. She starts shooting. David kills him. Now, also in the film, you see David, he uh, is learning karate or jujitsu with his uh, fighter. You see him at one of the moments practicing. And so one of the moments, him and Kinesio battling out, and he learned a move from his, like, sensei person. And then he used that move. Bust Kinesio on the head and then he just bashed him in the head uh, with the uh, toilet um, cover and killed Kinesio. So he would talk to his father. You don't notice his father till really to, to the end. And the father would never speak to him over the phone. And then uh, he calls into the jail and basically tell him like, yo... You know, and he like talked to me, and then he finally talked to him and said, "It was two of y'all, and now it's one." And he said, "You know, basically the Grim Reaper came to greet you, and you fought him off, and now you don't let it stand, and you're a king like me, or whatever." And he, and then basically David said, "I don't want this. Like I want to be doing with this life, you know." And so the father kind of ain't feeling that, and then it kind of goes off just like that. So overall, it was a decent film. Um, it could have been a little bit better, but I guess, you know, a lot of things might get cut out because of, you know, whatever people budget is, you know, uh, but it was, it could have been better. Like a lot of the storyline could have been better than what it was. Um, a decent film to watch, uh, out of my four star rating system, I'm going to give this a two out of four stars. It was decent enough. Um, two out of four stars. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment if you've seen it. Till next time.